Hello everybody! In this video I will show you a special magnet array that consists out of two ring arrays and what you can see here is the array under a magnetic viewing film. I'm just tilting and turning it so you can get a bit of an idea of what the field of it looks like and this is what the array itself looks like. So this is basically just two ring arrays um, stacked within each other. And I will explain to you how I arranged all the magnets to get this array and then I will show you what um, configurations you can arrange it and show this to you under the magnetic viewing film. So first off let me start with um, explaining how I arrange the magnets. So as you can see here I have um, stacked two ring arrays on top of each other and for sake of explanation I will just take this single one and here I have placed the magnet so that all poles are facing the same direction meaning they're all facing for example with this one north pole inwards as you can see here and of course south pole outwards and if you do this with all of these you get a field that looks like this under the magnetic viewing film this is the side view and of course on the other side it looks the same and interestingly you will um, if I take a compass and point it here you will see we have north pole here and also north pole here and south pole all the way on the outside meaning um, all north pole facing inwards and all south pole facing outwards and if you take another one of these of this array and just place the magnets the opposite direction meaning all poles facing south pole inwards and north pole outwards and stack them on top of each other you get an array like this and the field geometry looks kinda different then I will show you what this looks like so then you get a field that looks like this entirely different from the previous one before you will see in the center we have almost no magnetic field interestingly you can see here um, another ring that forms in the center I don't know where that comes from it would be interesting if you could put uh, the field viewer inside of the ring to see what actually happens inside of this ring so anyways I will just tilt and turn it a bit so you can get a more three-dimensional view of the field itself which also looks interesting so look at the side of it this is the side view and of course on the other side it looks exactly the same and yeah, this is basically this array, um, the outer ring. Now we will look at the inner ring. This is this one. It's um, arranged exactly the same as in the other one. These are also two um, ring arrays stacked on top of each other. On the top ring all the north pole facing inwards and on the other all south pole facing inwards. And we get the uh, kind of a similar field that we see here on the magnetic viewing film it looks like this of course the geometry is a bit smaller but we also have that at the center that yeah small point or ring where there is no magnetic field and I will just tilt it a bit to give you a more three-dimensional image and also the side view of it and the other side looks the same 
So a short disclaimer for this magnetic viewing film. Um, I have here this image and you can see um, it's color gradient. So the lighter the color, the weaker the field, meaning everywhere you see dark colors or black, the field pressure or magnetic field flux is the highest and everywhere you see bright colors, um, yeah, the field pressure magnetic flux is the lowest. And everywhere you see um, no color, like for example in center, or you can view it even better here, you have no magnetic field flux. So this is something interesting to keep in mind. Um, for later. So now I will assemble it back again. So as you remembered we have, let me show you this with the compass again. Now since we have stacked these two together we have south pole on this side and north pole on this side. And the same of course also goes for this small array. And now we stack them together, which can be a bit tricky, but if we take them with the unlike polarities, meaning we have North Pole facing inward here and South Pole facing outward here on this side, they are attracting and yeah, it wants to stay in the center. And yeah, we get an array like this. And I will show you what this looks like under the magnetic viewing film. It looks very interesting, I think. You can see this bright spot at the center where we have no magnetism. And now I will just tilt it and turn it a bit. So we have a more three-dimensional view of the field itself. So if I go away a bit, it looks like this. Then the side view. And of course on the other side it looks the same. And what I'm going to do next is I will disassemble it again. And then I will turn it and force it into it. Because now all the magnets are in a repelling state meaning now it is only held by the friction that, that holds it together and now all magnets are repelling towards each other and the field geometry of course changes and it looks like this which is also a very interesting field geometry I think you see these two rings and let me tilt and turn it a bit. To give you a three dimensional view again. Also the side view. And again like this. And I will show you um, half of it visible. So this is what I do when I tilt and turn it. And this is what I mean with side view. So just that you know what I'm actually doing under the, under the viewing film when I show it to you. This is the distance when I go away from it. So now let's move on to another interesting thing that you can do with it because um, in the center you see we have a hole and here I have just a stack of four neodymium disc magnets that makes basically one big magnet and I can place it right at the center and push it in. It needs a bit of force to actually go in there evenly and now I hope the camera focuses again. Now we have a 
I may have to zoom in and out a bit for the camera to focus again. Now we have this same um, magnet array but with a, yeah, a magnet in the center which gives us an entirely different field that I will show you in, under the field viewer like this. You will see at the center now we don't have this um, bright spot but more like a bluish black blob in the center. And I will tilt and turn it so you can get a better view. And you should also be able to see this with the white lines, the spirograph pattern. And yeah, if I tilt it a bit, you should get a good three dimensional view of the field itself. And for comparison again, I will take the same array but without the magnet in the center. And you will see it looks like this. It doesn't extend nearly as far. You can see um, yeah, how far I can go away until the viewer doesn't show anything anymore. Now I will take the same array with the magnet. And you can see I can go away much further and it still views it. So the field actually extends much further because the um, these magnets are all facing inwards and are basically compressing the field from this magnet. So yeah, I, what I see under the field viewer it is kind of compresses the field outwards here a bit. And this is also what you actually see when you view it from the side here. Just like this. You will see how far it extends outwards. And yeah, this is kind of interesting I think. And now let's just take this array and um, put it inside here. Which also requires some force, yes. So, I've placed it in here. Now let's show it under the magnetic viewing film. This is where it gets really interesting, I think. I'll show you this field in detail, so I will slowly get close to it. And you can already see this spirograph ring, this white pattern, appear. And if I get even closer to it, can then see an, an other, another magnetic ring. Yeah, I will just show it to you and it is kind of self-explanatory. So if I view it from here, from the side, like this, you can see um, we have multiple rings of magnetic fields and in the center it is kind of like, uh, yeah, I would say a blob <laughs> or a, a bubble that you see here right in the center that extends within these rings. So, very interesting, I think. I can also give you a side view just like this and the other side looks of course the same and this is what it looks like right on top of it and as you can see when I remove it it leaves an imprint on this viewing film which doesn't happen that easily um, for this to happen the field has to be really strong. I can of course remove it if I move it around here but yeah as you can see the field strength gets this strong at the center here that it actually leaves an imprint on the a temporary imprint on the field viewer which normally doesn't happen with regular magnets or even with strong N52 magnets and by the way these are all 
and 52 Gauss magnets, all of them. So that's really why we get a really strong field here. And yeah, what I'm going to do next is I will disassemble it again and force it in from a different from the different side. So it is now um, repelling. All magnets are repelling, not attracting. It's only held by the friction of the spacer here. So, what you see now is a different kind of field geometry. I will start with getting slowly closer to it. And you can see the field geometry changed drastically. We have this bigger ring here on the outside. And yeah, one ring less basically. And also what is interesting is the field extends even further, um, also in the center. The, the center part looks very interesting when you view this, view this from the side, like this. I'll show you like this, so you can get a better idea of what you're actually seeing. So, yeah, I think this is a really interesting magnet array. I'm speculating a bit about the purposes of it and what I'm going to do with it. Not too sure, not too sure about that now, but anyways, I just wanted to show you a um, special geometry of this array and how you can arrange it to get different effects. And yeah, I think that's basically it for this video. So thanks for watching and if you have any questions leave a comment and goodbye.